What is going on, everybody? What is going on? Welcome to this week's episode, episode 64 of the STS Guys. I am Jeremy. Hey, hey, it's Larry. Hey, guys, it's Nate. And I'm Scott. And we are the STS Guys, a weekly podcast where we sit around, shoot the shit, and talk Hi. about anything geeky, nerdy, and cool. What is going on this week, guys? It's been a week. It's uh, been a week. It's been a week. Oh, no. Who is, who is rebroadcasting our YouTube? I think that's Nate because he... <laughs> Nate. Oh, that's it's, it's been, been, a, been week. a week. It's been a week. Oh, it's been a week, guys. <laughs> oh, boy. It's been a nightmare week. Like, it was like delayed through my phone. All of a sudden, it just started playing. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. whoops. I can, I can tell you one thing. Uh... I made a, a grave mistake this week, or this weekend. Today, actually. Um, I decided to go to Costco two days before Christmas. Yeah, That was probably yeah, the yeah. worst mistake I've ever made my entire life. Dude, but all they, the roads are so horrible right now. I hate it. I hate this time of year. Hey, And, like, Saturdays at Costco are bad anyhow, but I can't imagine two days before Christmas, Costco Saturday. Yeah, no, it's absolutely nuts well isn't it what, what do they call this is, is it's like is it super saturday or they, they, it's something called it's something oh. specific oh like probably like Friday and then like super saturday or some shit whatever it's, it's like saturday. the whatever it is it's the like the day before christmas when all men start their christmas shopping yeah it's, everybody's like oh shit i only have like two days yeah, yeah. true like super <laughs> saturday I, yeah, yeah it's the second busiest uh the shopping hall shop, busy shopping day of the year I, I will tell you this. Uh, I will not go back to, to stores for the next. I'm going to try to stay away from every store I can for the next couple of days because that was well, so utterly I, insane. Well, so you, you, your mistake is 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 twofold. One, you went to Costco on a Saturday. That that yeah. just, just that it's, by itself is. A I nice needed thing. dog food. They were out. <laughs> My dog. <laughs> Eat. Yeah. <laughs> too. I had legitimate things to buy there. It was not like I wanted just to go browse. That's the thing have, that sucks. Unless you're like planning ahead for the crowd, you're gonna have to go out at some point to get something. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like it happens every year, and then I always kick myself and like, oh, why didn't I think about this a few days before Christmas? Yeah. But like, like you're not. You're just scooping the dog food out. You're not thinking like, oh, yeah. I should probably go today when they have half a bag or whatever. Yep, you got to stock up. I have three very large dogs. Like, yeah, I'm sure one day you have food. The next day, it's like gone. It's like, gone. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, no more dogs. Crazy. No, uh, it's yeah. It's it's been it's been a little, little bit of a crazy week for me too. Like I said, mid move. Uh, as you can see by my pile of uh, junk behind me. As I can't. I can't tell. It's no. gotten, You're it's moving. Hour. <laughs> Oh, are those boxes behind you? Oh, oh. oh. giant tower of stuff now. Which I uh, thought we just got sponsored by Lowe's and Home Depot, and you just had <laughs> special advertising behind you. But no, I guess you're moving. Of course, so for reals. For re it's, it's for reals now. For reals. And look, look. There's those detolfs for Nate. Nate yes. Nice. Yeah. He's gonna get his detolf cabinets. I'm gonna be destroying my office as well to get all that set up. All of this is going to have to come up down, get moved. Hey, so it'll be worth it in the long run because you'll have some awesome display cases. It should look uh, pretty cool. You know what? It's also been a crazy week. It's because, kind of, to Scott's mention, it's we're a few days away from Christmas. Two days. Yeah, it's nuts. Like I so said, this this time of year is crazy. Like I said, I'm normally I said I think what was it last year? Like I so said, we were having kind of trouble podcasting during this time. It looks like we were able to sneak one more in uh, be, before Christmas. So, uh, so the kind of purpose of of today's episode is going to be a very holiday centric episode. So I think we should uh, I think we should start off by having our fun little discussion, something that's basically fun to discuss every year. Is basically what's your guys' favorite Christmas movies? Oh, oh ho ho ho. <laughs> yeah. Ho ho ho. <laughs> now I have a machine gun. <laughs> All right, Scott. So we'll, we'll start since uh, you dropped a little hint there. What's what, yeah. I, think I, I, think I say okay. Um, so it's not like like uh, Die Hard is probably my favorite 
Christmas movie, right? Like uh, of everything that it's number one. Uh, but I do like all the little campy uh, uh, traditional movies, you know, like Elf and and all that stuff. Like those are fun, but nothing beats a good old action filled John McClane romp throughout Nakatomi Tower. Like that is the best one. But I do have a secondary one that I watch every year too, that a lot of people forget about. And that is Gremlins. That is another <laughs> one that I watch every year. All right. So well, well, let's, let's let's talk about this real quick. So uh, I want I want to get I want to get Larry Larry uh, Nate. I want to get your get your way in. Like I said, uh, Gremlins, Die Hard. Are those Christmas movies in your in your in your, uh, in your households? <laughs> This is like a long ongoing debate that keeps resurfacing. Like what really classifies as a Christmas movie? Yeah. I feel like, I feel like this wasn't a a debate like five years ago, but like recently it's just like every like December it's like, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? It just keeps getting more and more hype. It's like on the news now and stuff. It's ridiculous. You know, you know, it was a slow news day when Fox news tried to do the debate about Die Hard being a Christmas movie. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, come on. I, I think, don't think it matters if you guys want to make it a Christmas movie. It's set in Christmas. Isn't that enough to be a Christmas movie? That's exactly what I was going to say. It takes place during Christmas. Just because the movie isn't centered around Christmas doesn't mean it's not a Christmas movie. And uh, I think what John McClane was going for vacation, right? On he's, holiday. He's he's literally going for Christmas like right. with his... Uh, to meet up with his wife and his estranged wife and kids. And he's sent to the office Christmas party. Jeremy, you're logoing. <laughs> Jeremy, you're on fire. <laughs> ah, no. Yeah. So, I mean, the whole premise is him going to a Christmas party. Just so happens that terrorists show up to that Christmas party to try to rob it. It wasn't a very Merry Christmas that year. No, no. I mean, Christmas party. That like that's even a Christmas setting. Like maybe it doesn't have Santa Claus in it, but it sounds like a Christmas movie to me. Plus, Christmas is referenced quite a few times. I mean, dude, um, it, it, the first song you hear, the first legitimate song in that is a uh, Run DMC's "Christmas in Halice." So it, I mean, it, it even starts with a Christmas song. Well, and he, when he when he kills that guy and puts him in the elevator and makes ho, him ho, wear ho. a sweater, ho ho ho. Now I have now a I have machine, machine gun. gun. That's yeah. Christmas. The tape says season's greetings that he tapes the gun to his back with. Come on. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's quite there's a few uh if you, quite a few references in there. I, I, I get where everyone's coming from though, because there's one aspect of it that doesn't qual- meet that that standard qualification for Christmas movie is that it was released in July when it was originally mm-hmm. released in theaters. Yeah, so, okay. So I think that's where people are like, well, it's pe- people get killed. And then, you know, it was released in July, but everything else still is Christmas, right? The whole idea of that whole thing is Christmas. That's like saying you can't release a horror movie in July, outside, yeah, right? it's like outside you, of October. Yeah, it's not a horror movie because it's not in October around Halloween. Yeah, like, that no, doesn't, like that doesn't work. Yeah. All right. What about what about Gremlins? So I said we've. Die Hard, yeah, obviously. What, about Grim- what do you guys feel about Grim? One hundred percent. Yeah, don't they go shopping for a Christmas tree and stuff? Like it's very Christmassy. Too. Yeah, everything they're doing in that movie is centered around Christmas. It's yeah. yeah. Now Gremlins two, no, but the first Most one definitely is. Not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but he, he, so here's so if someone tries to argue with you in regards to Grim, because I because I had this argument. I forgot who brought this up the other day. Uh, it's not one of you guys. It's one. It's someone else that I know. Brought up the fact that no, you know what, Gremlins isn't a Christmas movie. I'm like, I'm like, let me read the official description of Gremlins. A gadget slave salesman is looking for a special gift for his sons and finds one at a store in Chinatown. The shopkeeper is reluctant to sell him the Mogwai, but sells it to him anyways, warning to never expose in the bright light water, feed him after midnight, yada yada yada. All this happens as a result of gang Gremlins that decide to tear up a town on Christmas Eve, and then the screenplay written by. Christmas movie connoisseur, Christopher Columbus. Mm-hmm. Is it? I didn't know uh, that. Yeah. That so, dude did everything. So, so here's, I guess, the, the main argument that a lot of people have is to test if it's a Christmas movie or not, right? And here's, here's kind of the rules. 
Would the movie be any fundamentally different if it was set at a different time of year? Could, you know, is Christmas or the aspect of it Christmas solely a setting and not part of the of the plot to any major degree? That's what I think the major argument that a lot of people have, which means Gremlins, uh, Die Hard, even for that matter, the thing I say, if you take Die Hard away, you also have to take away, uh, for that reason, you also have to take away uh, um, Home Alone. Home. Yeah, home, uh, right. Because a, a lot of the, tons of these other movies that people think or yeah. saying, though, well, those are Christmas movies. The, the, that argument fits them as well, and it's yeah. that idea of take away the Christmas aspect. Could you still have that movie? Yeah, Home Alone definitely could have been a summer vacation to Paris rather than a Christmas vacation to Paris. Right. It's I, the, it's this. They gave it a convenient yeah. excuse for the parents to leave. True, and and saying the words Christmas vacation. Like, you can't take the Christmas out of Christmas Vacation, the movie. No. That doesn't work. Well, in that movie, yeah. I mean, so if we're talking about favorites, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is one of my favorites. But that whole movie does kind of center around Christmas. Even though there's a lot that happens, it, it you know, the central thing is Christmas. Yeah, for sure. The Christmas lights, the tree, like, it's it's all Christmassy. You can't, you can't dump that movie in March. It wouldn't be the same. True. See, yeah. I've always been a Home Alone fan myself. Me too. Well, speaking of Home Alone, real quick, like you have, because I'm sure you guys have seen uh, the recent Google ad uh, with Macaulay Culkin in it. Yes, it's genius. How much money do you think they you had they had to pay him to reprise that role for those thirty seconds? Probably a hell of a lot because he hasn't really done anything. I was gonna say, but but then again, if he hasn't done a whole lot, do you, do you need to pay him a whole bunch or does he show up just for that paycheck? Cause he I needs think, it. I think a lot of people wanted to get him back into roles that they were familiar with. And he was like, no, I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. I mean, what was it? Cause Jeremy and I discussed there's the role a few years ago when he kind of reprises it for a little video where he's in a car. Right. And he's the guy saying how he doesn't want to, uh, why don't you want to contact your parents for Christmas? And he's like, let me tell you about the Christmas I had. And he's you know, like, my parents fucking left me alone with things and two guys tried to murder me <laughs> and like so he talks about like why he hates christmas as an adult because of all the shit that happened to him as a kid i do remember that what one thing that one thing that's crazy about i like, said this reprisal though is that it's nuts like i said like i said he actually looks healthy again like he looks like yeah, normal, he looks, normal, he looks normal. good he looks the like drugs uh, finally wore off yeah, like, not on drugs anymore. It looks like it looks. He looks like normal Macaulay. Culkin. He looks like an, an adult Kevin McAllister. Like it, yeah. You know what I think saved his life? Did you guys know he's a podcast now? Was so, he? Yeah. I, I think that came out after sobriety, though. To be honest yeah, with you, <laughs> I feel like podcasting saved his life. <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking that I'm thinking that based on you know kind of the idea of having a strict schedule people who are on those quality of drugs generally are pretty bad at keeping a schedule. Yeah. I think Larry sends a very important message. If you want to live a clean podcast. life and not get back into the crazy stuff, you should probably podcast or listen to podcasts. Yeah. It's not like, you know, we don't have Shut our up. vices <laughs> as, as Scott presents the liquor bottle. Like, yep, that's what I'm doing. Hey, shout out to Kirkland Water. Hey, yeah. Kirkland Water. what? If I if if I decide to stop having the whiskey, I got oh. the water ready. I feel like that is an unofficial sponsor right there. Oh God, Kirkland's Water, yeah, because you can't beat the like twenty four pack for three dollars. Just yeah. tells you how much it's infected our lives. It's true. I just told yeah. you I was at Costco. I know. I know. <laughs> I was there earlier this week. I said, that's not a Costco sized water bottle. It's a 48 pack. Yeah. 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 Seriously. Uh, so my favorite Christmas movie is also Home Alone. Um, I can I can share something. Uh, I watched another Christmas classic for the first time this morning. Uh, I watched Jingle All the Way, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh my I had God. never seen that before. Oh. Ever. Boy, uh, that is an underrated Christmas. You know, I don't ever see it played anywhere. I'm so glad Larry just brought this up. Yeah. That yeah. was on that was on TV, and I and I was watching it too. We might have been watching it at the same time. It's watching, possible. 
Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sinbad fight over the last remaining action figure. Like, yeah, it holds up uh, for, for the most part, aside for some technology stuff and the fact that it's so, life is so much easier with eBay. Yeah. Um, like it, it still holds up. It was a, it was a good movie. I, I just love how that movie pokes fun at how nasty people can be when shopping is involved and it's limited quantity of things. Like people are running over each other. They're conning against each other. I mean, it, it's, it's just like, you know, real life. People are nasty out there. I mean, you get that, you get the late, great Phil Hartman in there. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's right. Bang. He plays that creeper yeah. neighbor. Yeah. yeah. He was good in that. Yeah, he, he, wanted, he wanted her to bring some cookies for him. Like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what was the action figure? Turbo Man, right? Turbo Man. Yeah, Turbo Man. Turbo Man. So, so, so you'd never seen this before, Larry? Like, this is your very first time seeing this? Never in that my entire surprising. life. So, it's such a horribly rated Christmas movie. I actually like. I actually liked it a ton. I thought it was a great movie. Yeah, like when Arnold Schwarzenegger is great in those family movies. Yeah, dude. It was, dude yeah. I, you, you have the great. You have the, you have the best line of "Put the cookie down now." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love how like spoilers if you haven't seen this movie that's like thirty years old. Uh, I like how at the end when he's in the Turbo Man costume at the parade. And he picks his son to win the prize. And he's sitting there talking with this thick accent. And his son doesn't realize it's his dad. <laughs> How many like, people have that, that accent in their little town? Yeah. I'm like, it must be some other here. giant man with an Austrian accent. Yeah. That's, that's the thing that really kind of sticks out in this movie. Like, his wife doesn't have the accent. His kid doesn't. <laughs> no. He's well, like the only guy that yeah, seems yeah. to be from out of the country. And yet no one recognizes him when he's in the Turbo Man costume <laughs> talking over a loudspeaker. It's not, wait a minute, that guy kind of looks like dad. Jake Lloyd, dumbest kid ever. Yeah. Hey, you know what, though? Like I said, it's, like I said, it's young Anakin Skywalker. It I was just going to say, yep. Right? That's Darth yeah. Vader, man, right there. Darth Vader, like the going through Jedi his, power. Crying because his dad's a bad dad, right? He's, he's got daddy yep. issues. Yeah. Uh, and he wants, his, he wants his Turbo Man doll. Turbo Man doll. Tell me you got the doll. <laughs> and then those those fake Santas, like oh, at the trying end. to sell him like yeah. a bootleg yeah. Turbo like, Man. And he, and he talks in Spanish. Yeah. And then uh, Arnold good. ends up fighting like a wrestler Santa at yeah, some point yeah. by Warwick Davis. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I didn't even catch that. That's awesome. Yeah, he's uh, one of the, he's the midget Santa. I'm yeah. sorry, the little person Santa. Yeah. Yeah. So trying try to be PC right here. Um. <laughs> it's it's a great movie. I'm glad, I'm glad you finally saw it because I, th I think everyone needs to see Jingle All the Way at least once. Yeah, me too. But me yeah, too. it's one of those ones I never see because it's very rarely on TV. I'm kind of sad I missed it. But uh, yeah. I, it is a very underrated Christmas movie. Just people don't put it on their list of best Christmas movies. Well, I was kind of hoping that it was going to be on like Netflix or something because, like I said, last year, like I said, like I said last year it was on Netflix and Prime, uh, but yeah, this year it's not. Yeah, it should yeah. be. It's the perfect Netflix movie. Like, right? You don't really want to watch it, but if it's there, you're, yeah. You're and, oh, if it's it. on, I will throw like throw that thing up. Like that's for sure. For sure, yeah. Uh, it was on this morning, and I hadn't planned on watching it, but as soon as I saw it, I couldn't stop. Yeah, I gotta watch this movie. Like I gotta. See it's basically movie. True Lies Kids Christmas Edition. <laughs> yeah, True Lies Kids Christmas. And True why is it? Why isn't Sinbad still in movies, man? Yeah, I was just gonna say <laughs> that guy was awesome. I, did you guys ever see that He's Disney hilarious. movie First Kid, where he like the. Uh, the yeah. kid, kids, the president's son, and he's like Secret Service. That movie's great. I love Sinbad. Mm-hmm. Or that movie where he's like faking that he's a dentist. You guys remember that? Oh yeah. What was that even called? Um, I don't know. Or was that he, wasn't he also in Blank Check, or was that somebody else? No, nah, somebody else. That was yeah, somebody, else. somebody else. Blank Check was very similar to First Kid. Like yeah, the but kid I in thought, it, they both looked very similar. Oh, it's called he, House Guest. House oh, Guest. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Remember, he puts Novocaine all over his hands, and he can't feel his hands. <laughs> Man, was in Blank Check. Blank check. Oh no, it's Tone Loke. It's Tone Loke. That's Tone Loke. Yeah, yeah. Blank check. That's who it was. I thought he was in a couple. I was like, isn't he in both of them? <laughs> he true. plays. He plays the guy that's. I thought he played the guy that was like, oh, I'll be Macintosh. Super low voice Tone Loke. 
Yeah. Look. Wait, didn't somebody see Tone Loke at a con recently? Yeah, Larry, this you guy. did. I was about to say, yeah. this is the second time we brought up Tone Loke on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. That's got to be a record. Is he still as cool? Uh, I He was okay, like, um, but you can tell, like, doing the deep voice hurts his throat, so he doesn't do it very much. Hmm. So it's no, like a thing that he produces. Down. It's not like natural. Uh, yeah, it's not his normal voice. Like, he's got to go deep to get it in or whatever. Deep yeah. and raspy. Then, yeah. <laughs> I right. thought Tone Loke was on, on the podcast Larry. for a second. Yeah. I know. <laughs> from now on, we gotta keep that here. Keep what? Keep what here? What? I want that about? voice. That voice. Jeremy's Tone Loke voice. Yeah, I need it. I need it from now on. Well, welcome to the STS Guys podcast. This is uh, Tone here with uh, episode sixty-four of Very Dude. STS Christmas. You should uh, just put on one of his music videos or something. I ain't down with that. Wait, wait, wait. You want, you want to hear some Tone Loke? I think we're going to get flagged on Spotify. but He's got he's got a really famous one. I just wild Thing. Yeah. Funky Cold Medina. Yeah. Wild no. Thing. Bro. Yeah, Wild Thing's probably the biggest, though. That's an ad. We don't want to listen to that ad. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, Larry's, Larry's right. We're probably going to get flagged. We are, so like do two seconds and bail. Uh, <laughs> I, I like being on Spotify. Do some so, Wild Thing. Hey, we're already on Spotify, so we can just. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there it is. That was enough. There you go. It's like that John Cena belt I have where you spit it and pl- it plays the song, but it only plays like three seconds of the John Cena <laughs> intro. So every so, time you spit it, like everybody at work's like, I want to hear more. And then we have to play the entire John Cena theme. Larry, yeah, right. I immediately go and try to find that song. Yes. Larry, you inadvertently brought up a good segue. Yay. So, so we talked about Christmas movies, our favorite Christmas movie. We have we had a little beta, we don't die hard being a Christmas movie, all the other What about Christmas songs? Oh, so, yeah. so you so you bring up John Cena. God, I wish he had a Christmas song. <laughs> oh God, oh. that is an amazing segue. Come on. <laughs> there you go, Larry. You got you got it. I said you see where I'm going. You were talking about one of the best all time Christmas songs, simply titled Christmas by Froggy Fresh. <laughs> what is this? What is this song about, Larry? I, I've never heard this. I've never heard this song before. Well, I, I know Jeremy has. I know Scott has. Nate, are you familiar with uh, I, "Christmas" by Froggy Fresh? I heard this during a recent White Elephant party, actually. Did you? Oh yeah, that's right. Um, so it looks like Scott's computer shut down. So while Scott's rebooting, I just like like <laughs> some of the. Person. Yeah, some some of the excellent lyrics in Christmas by Froggy Fresh. He he runs through his Christmas list, right? So the first thing on his list, go figure, is a brand new John Cena action figure. It is a song about a guy who just wants everything John Cena for Christmas. If you have not heard this song, it is on Spotify. It's on YouTube. There's a great video for it, actually. So YouTube it up and... Have yourself an awesome Christmas wish list with Froggy Fresh. No, you, gotta, you gotta check this out, guys. No, we, it's pretty we awesome. so, so me and Larry actually saw Froggy Fresh perform this live uh, when we, we were did. in uh, San Diego because he uh, Froggy Fresh actually opened up for the Aquabats uh, was when we were down at San Diego Comic Con, and it was music that we didn't know how to feel at first. <laughs> No, like I think we both we walked in after he was already started, and I think we we're both like, "What's happening right now?" But as soon as we got home, I think both of us separately like some of the songs got stuck in your head, and I'm like, "I, I kind of want to go listen to that again." So um, we both did that, and then one day we made it back up at work, and I think I was googling it or something, look, looking for uh, "Dunked On," and Jeremy's like, "Froggy Fresh is actually kind of awesome." I'm like, "Yeah, I've been listening to him every once in a while too." Yeah, so. and then I gave you the hit song. I gave you the hit song back, "Fish Out of Water." Yeah, wobbly, wobbly. <laughs> yeah. Fish Out of Water is another great song. He, there's like four or five Froggy Fresh songs that are just awesome. So I'm gonna how, have to explore this. Describe little this music, Larry. Like, well, it's, well, it's like nerdy uh, white guy rap, where like he's an adult, right? But he kind of sings like he's a teenager. Uh, a lot of the lyrics are super simple, but they're pretty funny and goofy. Um, like, like the one dunked on is about, uh, him dunking on his friend in a basketball game. It's, it's, it's just ridiculous. Very family friendly too. So like I said, even, yeah, the, yeah, even, yeah. even the whole family can listen to Froggy Fresh. It's true. Uh, 
it's, 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 it's no explicit content warning. No. I don't think so. At least not the songs that I'm familiar with. You know, you might you might get a little bit of uh, touching a cute girl's butt, but that's about it. Oh wow! But yeah, no longer no. safe for me. It's okay, Nate, because mom said you're not allowed to touch a girl's butt till you're grown up. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny. Uh, it's perfect. Uh, you, you, you know what? I said my favorite song. I said my, my, my favorite uh, Christmas songs are. I said I like the, the, the traditional Christmas songs, but I also kind of like the new age stuff too. So no one can sing Christmas songs like the like the great Michael Bublé. Oh, oh, yeah? Yeah. You're talking uh, about some like, some premium stuff. It's yeah, premium. that's high end, like yeah, that's like real <laughs> yeah, passionate. Like, like you know, you know, you have Mariah Carey and her Christmas album over here, mm -hmm. but then you have Michael Blue Blay, you know, bringing up the dude side over here. So you got female side Mariah Carey, dude side Michael Blue Blay. Is nice. Michael Blue Blay just like playing the hits? Or like the classics, or does he have original stuff too? I'm not familiar with his Christmas just, album. It's just like it's, it's the classics, but then he puts his own spin on things. Yeah, he like, re-sings some stuff, right? Like, so for example, yeah. you would think like, hey, how could a dude sing Santa Baby? But guess what? He pulls it off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like, basically, I legit, yeah, basically you need to look it up. Yeah, I legit don't think I've ever heard this unless it's just in passing. But I guess after this podcast... Me and all the other STS guys fans, if you haven't heard it, let's go Google Michael Buble's Christmas album. Especially Santa Baby sounds awesome. You'll Who have doesn't a like that song? brought to your eye. You'll be like, oh man. Yeah, this is, Santa this Baby. Is intense. Yeah, typically <laughs> sung by a female because it's basically all the female things that she's going to do to basically get Santa to come to her. But you know what? We live in the 21st century, and you know what? A guy can do that too. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. You know, very progressive. I'm proud of Michael Bublé for breaking down those walls. You know what? Yeah. He's. I, I think he's a national hero. Yeah, absolutely. So you got it. You got to flaunt it, right? You got to flaunt it. Yeah, you got to. You got to flaunt it. Well, you know, guys, I like Christmas songs that also talk about other favorite characters. There's always one uh, that a certain villain will sing. To Batman and his jingle bells, Batman smells. Robin was wondering if that's where you were going. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess that that solidifies your status as a super Batman fan. Exactly. Yes. Yay, Scott's right. back. Hey, hey. So my PC was like, "Hey, we're restarting," and then stop. I was about to say Scott's out sick, but you're I, back. Yeah. I was no, thinking it, you get to. this thing. It had a little pop up. It's like, "Hey." uh, we installed some updates. You're restarting, and I was like, "No, do it later." And then it just shut off. I was like, "Nope, doing it now." <laughs> Not so, cool. What That's you missed? We're talking about favorite Christmas songs. I We've already know. brought up such classics like "Christmas" by Froggy Fresh, yeah. Michael Bublé, "Santa Baby," and Nate loves Jingle Bells. <laughs> Batman, Batman smells. <laughs> Robin you. laid an egg. Yes. The Batmobile lost its wheel, and the Joker got away. Yes. There you go. Um, I do like the new classic of Spidey Bells. I did share that Ooh. with Nate. Oh, he did yeah. enjoy that one. Yeah, uh, you told the... me that was. It's on iTunes, but I found it on Spotify too. Yeah. yeah tell us about so, that, Scott. What's that all about? So, out of the new Spider Verse, they make mention of uh, a, a Spider-Man Christmas album. And at the very end of the song, the, like the end credits, they play Spidey Bells, which is one of the songs from that thing, which is Chris Pine uh, singing uh, Jingle Bells. But it is the, uh, you know, all about Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. So you forgot. Sad yeah. Sad Spidey version, too, because it gets right, a little depressing. At the, at the end. In the middle, he's like, I have a, He's like, why am I singing this song? I have a degree in chemical. <laughs> but. My favorite song, I think, that's a Christmas song, you guys didn't probably mention, is called, uh, it's like Ground Zeroes at Christmas. It's a Weird Owl Christmas song where Santa goes crazy and basically goes on a murder spree on the North Pole. That's, I think, my favorite Christmas song. Wow. You know what? Nothing, what is that? 
Nothing brings the holidays like mass murder. Yeah, exactly. Look at my favorite Christmas movies, and did you expect anything different from me? Wait, it's it's blood Santa. Is red. Yeah, blood is red. Christmas is Christmas. A primary color of Christmas is red. I, I get it, Scott. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, who's right? a better person to turn into a mass murderer than the guy that visits children all night? Right, and then can you know magically go into anybody's house? Like, yeah. Come on, I mean that's like perfect crime right there. It couldn't be Santa. No, it it can't be. No, but this one is like, like he kills all the elves and the reindeer. It's actually, if you listen to it, it's a very good song. It's Weird Al, so obviously it's it's generally pretty funny. Uh, but it's I, I try to listen to it every Christmas as well. No, really, really bringing in the season here, guys. We are bringing in the season. I'm bringing in the murder and uh, death into Christmas, as uh, as as is tradition. <laughs> um. So, be, I said besides, I said Christmas songs, Christmas movies. What about what about what's what's your all time? So you know, think of all you know of years past. And can I? I kind of want everyone to kind of kind of share one thing they got. Like, what was your all time favorite Christmas gift that you've ever? Oh. So, uh, Nate, Nate, let's kick this off with you first. Nice. I will never forget this gift because I wanted it so bad. And the timing of the release was right around Christmas. It's the Nintendo 64. Um, I had been asking my mom for that because I knew it was coming. I was like, please give me the Nintendo. I don't want anything else. Just give me the Nintendo with Mario. And sure enough, I opened it on Christmas Day and I lost my shit. Started screaming. Immediately ran to the TV, started plugging it in. And I, I think I played that like all day. It was awesome. So Nintendo 64 is one of my best gifts ever. Scott, what about you? So this is this is uh, back in the day. Uh, I, I've told you before, like I think on the podcast here, I've been generally obsessed with uh, Jurassic Park. And when the first movie came out, there's a whole bunch of toys that they had. And they had this T-Rex that used to, if you like slammed it on the ground, it would like make stomping noises. And if you open its mouth, it would roar. Like it was this awesome T-Rex thing. Uh, and I got that for Christmas one year. And it was absolutely, absolutely amazing. That was the gift from Santa Claus that uh, I didn't expect. And it was, it was all that I uh, could have wanted and more. Nice. So you were you playing with that all day and your parents were like, please, God, yeah, take the like, batteries out of this. <laughs> As it's going, you know, if you open his mouth and go, like the thing, <laughs> you know, like, um, yeah, it was, it was nuts. Like, I'm sure that I, and the batteries died in it real quick. So I'm pretty sure my parents at some point were like, when I was sleeping, like, went in there and, you know, swapped it with a dead battery or something. Uh, <laughs> but just to uh, get a break. Yeah, just just yeah. to get a little bit of a, a breather from from my dumb ass. Going, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have it eat all my GI Joes. Like it was, uh, it was awesome at the time. But yeah, that was that was I think my favorite thing. Nice, Larry. What about yours? So I've got a couple. Huh, interesting. Um, so I just googled to see what year Castle Grayskull came out. It was 1982, so I must not have got it in 1982, but um, that's mine. Like, I was big into Masters of the Universe for a little bit. I had to be, like, four, so it was, you know, it was early 80s, maybe mid-80s, but, yeah, I totally remember getting Castle Grayskull. Like, you can't play He-Man, guys, without Without, the He-Man castle. You need, yeah, yeah, you need, yeah. where are you going to go, I have the power at, like, Right, it had that drawbridge. It was it was a cool place set. That man. was a really cool place. Castle set. Gray School was pretty awesome. I didn't have a whole lot of he like I had more G.I. Joe's than He-Man toys, but I was always jealous of the Castle Gray School because that was awesome. I think yeah. I mean I'll, I'll speak for everybody. We all had to have at least one play set, right? Yep. Castle Gray School was amazing. I feel like that's like like G.I. Joe had some cool stuff, right? Like the the really big stuff, but as far as like a, a reasonable kind of just uh, one one level playset thingy, yeah. uh, Castle Grace was probably about as good as it gets. Uh, G.I. Joe had like that big battle cruiser thing. So, I, so that's what yeah. I was going to say. Me and my brother both were obsessed. We'd have these epic G.I. Joe battles. Yeah. So it wasn't a Christmas gift that I, maybe it was, but I can't remember. Uh, but we both had joint custody over the G.I. Joe <laughs> aircraft carrier. I think yeah. it was huge. Yeah, it was. It was huge. Yeah, USS Flag. Yeah, Jeremy yeah. got it. 
Um, yeah, I, I always love the Batman. Of course, the Batman playset because it had the Batcave. It had a place for him to change his suit. It had the computers. And then it also had kind of like a garage door that would open up. And it had a backside, which was like a chemical plant. It was super cool. I actually still have one of those. <laughs> of course you do. Okay, let's see here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it just made me- me- that the, G- the USS flag measured just under seven feet six inches. It's <laughs> crazy. So, I still have all my Master Universe figures, but I know Castle Great Skull made its way to the Goodwill, uh, probably when oh. I was in like fourth or fifth grade. Like, I don't know how my like my, my parents saved everything, but somehow that one that one was was in the no go pile. I also had uh. I didn't have the USS flag, but I had the terror dome. Dome oh, it was like ooh. this giant yes. circular bad guy base for GI Joe, right? The Cobra base um, that didn't make it either, unfortunately. But that thing was—it wasn't USS flag aircraft carrier, but man, it had to be like three feet wide. It was especially as like a little kid, man. That stuff all looks so huge to you. Yeah, um, that thing yeah. was massive. Well, and then uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles had a really cool playset too. It was like under the sewers. Yeah, that that's you know? super place that, that, that yeah that's cool. the the turtle base or whatever it was. Oh man, it was so cool. And they also had the uh, the techno drum, the big that's robot. that's the one I thought you were gonna say too. That one is pretty massive too for yeah. what it was. Yeah. All right. So, so you guys wanna know mine? Yes. Yes. Yeah, let's go. Yes. It comes with a heartbreak story too. Oh, <laughs> oh no. no. So, I, I, I do have an amendment if we're talking heartbreak, I will add after you go. All right. So, so the one thing I wanted so bad when I was a kid was a remote control car, but a very specific remote control car because I saw the commercial like a million times uh, that year. And do you guys remember the Tayo Fast Tracks? Oh yeah, the, I the, the, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna screen share real quick. Um, so this was the Fast Tracks. Oh uh, yeah, the, 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 oh, I remember that guy. Yeah, yeah it was sweet. sweet. Yeah, they, they hauled were, ass. There were so many awesome commercials with the fast tracks. I'm like, it, this was this was this was awesome. It hauled ass, and like it had these shreds and everything else like that. Um, so you 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 may think that having treads, and so so you know what? I asked for it, asked for it, asked for it. It was the only Christmas gift I got that year. I wanted it so bad. I finally got it. And then you know what? As a kid, you can't wait to charge that sucker up, you know, and go and, and, and take it out. Um, so, you know, I drove it out, you know, I drove it out of the neighborhood and I drove it to, to you know, the, the, the local park. This is not uh, going to end well. So you may think that, hey, you want, <laughs> having all these treads, it's awesome. So, you know what? It's off road. So you can take it through, you know, sand. Guess what? You can't take through sand. The tile fast tracks because it'll mess up the motor. I oh, literally no. had it for 24 oh, hours. Oh. <laughs> so then it got ruined. Uh, we took it to an RC repair shop. They're like, yeah, it's not worth it to fix this. That sucks, man. That wow, that's sucks. awful. I bet your parents were so pissed. Oh, so angry. But uh, <laughs> it was it was so amazing. Like, I've honestly wanted to buy one um, on eBay a couple different times just because I'm like, I have such fond memories of the Fast Tracks. I think it was really cool, uh, especially the fact that it was totally, like, um, all terrain, except for sand. Yeah. Um, yeah, did not do sand. I had one that would, uh, you could take it through the snow in my backyard. That was really cool. Like it went through it, no problem. Yeah. So fast forward to my adult years. Um, so I wanted to, to reclaim to my love of RC. And so, but then I'm like, you know what? I'm an adult now. I can do, I can do the big boy, you know, RC cars. The one that actually take gasoline. Yeah. So basically, if you've ever looked at, so, the, so there's basically three types of cars. There's the electric cars, there's the gasoline ones, and there's ones that take nitro fuel. Yeah, the jet uh, fuel, yeah. or the racing fuel cars. Yeah, so I had basically a car that took this nitro fuel. Um, this remote control car, like I said, got up to like 60-something miles per hour for a remote control car. This thing was ridiculous. Those things are insane. So you may think that, hey, you know what? It's awesome to have a remote control car that goes 60 miles an hour. 
You know, you can't steer at 60 miles an hour. A remote <laughs> control car. Or you lose track of it super quick. Like, uh, yeah, because uh, it's on the other side of the park. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you drive well, it and you're like, and I'm out of radio control. We'll see. Uh, it just too. stops. I wish I would have taken it to a park because what I did was, listen, you guys all know where I live. Um, I, t- I was driving it up and down the street in my neighborhood. And they said, in my neighborhood, there's these little like jet outs, these little jet things out that basically slow the down. Slow track. down. Yeah. The, the, the force slow down. down. Yeah. yeah. Um, I hit one of those going like 60 miles an hour in this car and just busted it to pieces. <laughs> Jesus. I think I'm just. I think I'm just destined not to ever have a, cur- a curb at sixty. Will do that to you. Yeah, it busted all over the place. I'm like, oh, uh, yeah. I had one of those briefly until the pool start broke, and it was a huge pain in the ass to fix it. So I decided just not yeah. to. I see. I didn't have a pool start. I had the ones with the glow plugs. Yeah, the glow plug was definitely a better choice. Yeah. So okay. So since Jeremy showed some heartbreak. I have an amendment to the uh, the dinosaur toy, though. Oh, you're going to change it now? No, it's not. It's not an amendment. Okay. It's what occurred with the dinosaur toy. It oh, was gosh. also the reason why I found out that Santa wasn't real. <laughs> <laughs> because my parents, that was a, that toy was a gift from Santa, right? My parents just forgot to take the uh, the department store tag off of the bottom of the thing so when i opened up the present the first thing i saw was the price tag from the store they bought it at (laughs) on the present and they were just like oh shit how old were you at this point it was dude that that was had to be what 92 or 93 uh based on dress apart because it came out uh right after the the movie came out and so that was what 93 so I was probably, nine years, I was like nine. nine so it was like the confirmation of like, there is no Santa Claus. Nine years old. That's when Scott stopped believing in Santa. Yeah. That's pretty sad. All right, that's, 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 that's a good topic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that, that actually that does bring up the, uh, the thing. So yeah, it's the T-Rex with battle damage um, that came out. Yeah. And it was that, that toy came out in 93. So it had to be Christmas 93. So Nate, when did you stop believing in Santa? Like, did you, do you have a heartbreaking yeah. story of basically what what broke your heart? You no, know, you know, you did you, like, hey, you know what? My parents lied to me for all these years. I hate you, parents. Ugh, why'd you do this to me? Um, I can't remember what age I was, but I do remember that moment pretty vividly because my mom was super pissed when she found out. Um, so I was talking to my grandma, and um. You know, we're just talking about Christmas and I'm like, oh, man, I can't wait for Santa to come. You know, I'm excited for the gifts. And she's like, oh, you still believe in Santa? And I was like, yeah, why not? She's like, well, she, he's not real, honey. <laughs> and I was like, oh, on. my. I was like, what? <laughs> so you I go, son of a bitch. <laughs> I immediately get up and go talk to my mom. I'm like, wait, grandma's saying Santa's not real. She's full of it. Right. And yeah. she's, <laughs> she I can see her get like super pissed. So then it's like confirmation. Like, oh, crap. Grandma was telling the truth. <laughs> mom so, is the liar. Grandma's yeah, they, awesome. And then I start, yeah, I start realizing, like, mom, you've been lying to me this whole freaking time. So that was my story. I wouldn't say it was super dramatic, but it was just kind of like all of a sudden, there you go. It, it was that thing of like, yay! Oh, dreams no. crushed for this year. Thank you. It's been you this whole time. And that was probably like two or three days before Christmas. That was still fresh in my mind the whole time. Yeah, when Christmas morning comes around, you're like. There's a stocking full of stuff. You're like, you motherfuckers, yeah, you, the, you filled it. The tag <laughs> says from Santa. I'm like, who's the freaking liar here? Yeah. Who's doing it now? Yeah. <laughs> so, Larry, what about you? I, I really don't remember. I, I Maybe like fourth grade. I, I really, I don't have a good story. I don't even remember how I found here, out. Here's the greatest thing. We do have enough listeners that have children that we may have just uh, inadvertently, <laughs> in the car, oh. uh, one of our listeners' kids going, Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> Why are those guys saying Santa's not real? <laughs> oh my god, I didn't think of that. Oh man, <laughs> explicit warning, kids, but that's okay. <laughs> it's it's oh, I just realized I... That as we're talking about this, I'm like, Nah, this is live online, like, we are going to be the cause of it potentially. <laughs> Someone's kid going, 
Uh, what those guys just say? Yeah, we're gonna get a comment below after uh, that. I do assholes. You no, I'm, I'm sons just, of I'm a... just thinking, like I said, I said we're gonna we're gonna be part of some kid's story in the future. Like, how did you find out? Well, I was listening to this podcast. <laughs> my my mom and dad listened to this podcast, and these guys just said it. Oh, crushing dreams. You know what? So besides crushing dreams, so I want I want to take a pause right here, real quick. On time, Z's. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick video giveaway. Oh, what? So, uh, I recently got Venom. I never saw it in the theater. I nice. watched it. That movie is a pile of shit. <laughs> and you're gonna give it away. <laughs> is it like it's like a turd blowing in the wind? It is a turd <laughs> blowing in the wind. I, I didn't like it at all. Was the it leg, at least harmless. better? Was it at least better than you thought it would be? I don't even know about if it was better than I yeah. thought it would be. I, I, I honestly thought it was better than than I thought it would be going into it. I thought it was going to be really bad, and it was just pretty bad. You yeah. know, what I think it is. Is I've had enough time before I even had a chance to watch it that I kind of had my expectations set really low, yeah. and it met exactly what it was. But I started to pick out like all the bad things because I already knew it was bad. You know, when you go into a movie yeah. knowing it's going to be bad, you're like, I'm going to pick out shit I don't like. Like, I'm going to tear this movie apart. Like, I think I just, I had ruined my uh, movie watching sentiment. I think, Jeremy, that probably is what happened to you, too. Yes, that is exactly what happened. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass my garbage on to you with a digital <laughs> copy of, of Venom. Uh, but then also to make up for it, you also get a digital copy of Deadpool 2. Ooh, uh, nice. Double code that, Saturday. That just sweeten the pot for sure. Double code Saturday. So you, get, you basically get two movie codes. So one for a piece of shit movie. And then one for a movie that was actually pretty good. Okay. So I, I have to add in here. Thomas Blaskowitz uh, in the, the chat is saying, uh, he said that uh, the, the movie Avatar. I would have watched Avatar The Last Airbender twice instead of watching Venom once. Um, that that is well, that well, is my opinion on that. You don't even know what he's talking about. I said, what if he's talking about Avatar Pocahontas in space and not Avatar? Yeah. Okay, no, I, I don't I, think I'm he's talking Airbender. He's talking no, I, I, no. James Cameron. Yeah, no, I'm going to say this. I would watch the Airbender one twice before I watched De uh, Venom once again. But what if Venom was free? And you got I would still code. go out of my way to find Airbender to watch it. You know, I would love to have Venom in my digital library. Yeah. I would, you know what, yeah. though? The Deadpool 2 digital copy, because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeremy, that is going to be the unrated one, too, right? Uh, I don't know. It's the digital copy, so I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Either way, it's free. Either way, it's free. So for those of you who joined us in the chat on this lovely Saturday right before Christmas, in order to win this movie, just comment, I said, in the chat right now, your favorite Christmas movie. And then if it's basically, if it aligns to Scott's favorite Christmas movie, with this. Ooh. Which one though? Because I said two. Can it so, be either? Have you been listening? Have you been listening? That's 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 the that's, that's first, first person. First person. First Ooh. person to match Scott's favorite Christmas so, movie. He said two, so you kind of get two chances. Here you get now. two chances, and and, and uh, Thomas, a Charlie Brown Christmas movie. I can't watch that because apparently it's racist now. Oh, oh. hey, wait, wait, we, we have winner. <laughs> We yep. do have a winner. Oh, dang. I, I don't even know if Brian was part of that, but he probably knows me well enough to know what my favorite Christmas movie I is. I think he joined after, but yeah, it was it was pretty obvious. Long, Long time yeah. STS oh, fan Brian. legend. So we, so we have Brian Rainey. Brian Rainey is the winner. So, Brian, I will uh, message you these two codes post-podcast. So, yes. you have Deadpool 2 and then also a copy of yes. that. Well, I'm actually yes. super and, happy and, Brian won. Yes. And uh Thomas, uh for, for the comment that you're saying, what about uh go look it up online <laughs> up online, man. We do not have time to get into that shit here. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Hey, Jeremy, and I, Jeremy and I have been laughing about it for like a month. Yeah, ever since the Thanksgiving Charlie Brown came out. It's just yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Well, congrats to Brian. I'm happy that you won. He's a awesome guy. 
longtime fan. Yes. He's got his own great channel, so please go check him out. And see, see, Brian, your uh, SGS guy's knowledge has uh, has prevailed again. <laughs> yep. It's paying off. It pays to be a fan. It's paying off, we, buddy. It we appreciate yeah. that. So slight well, giveaway update. We're still working on the next prize back. Um, it's been yeah, we haven't done anything really super mega in a while. And I think we're uh, having a little bit of withdrawals here. So uh, I, I do have a topic I wanted to bring up. And Jeremy, I know you got something to say. So go ahead and then I'm gonna ask you guys. It's it's kind of like looking back at the year, you know, because yeah. we're coming to a close on 2018, 2019's right around the corner. So I want to ask you guys. Uh, out of all the things that you've picked up this year, what's your top pickup of 2018? Ooh. And I want to start with uh, let's start with Jeremy. Oh, um, putting you on the that, spot here, man. That, no, dude, that's actually a really hard question. I know it's going to be a tough one. I thought well, I put you guys on the spot. Stuff, I don't have my stuff to look at, so I'm like, okay. I'm turning <laughs> around, like, what am I got close by that I can pull? Um, like I said, it, it's it's hard. Uh... <laughs> Sorry. I should like, have prepped you guys for this. Like it's, I don't know. It's it's really hard. Um, probably. Uh, okay, I, I got it. Probably. Uh, it's the item, but it's more the story that goes along with the item. Okay. Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy's newest butt plug. Oh Jesus! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Scott. Uh, why, why you gotta derail, man? Big big round one too. <laughs> Jerry, continue, please. <laughs> uh, it's probably uh, my Yoda Freddy um, from Funko Fun Days. Uh, so it was my first Funko Fun Days that I've ever been to. And literally, I had such a blast. I said, Larry was kind enough to, to take me. Um, like, literally, I was on my feet the entire night. I felt like I said, I said half of our table was basically just yelling and screaming the entire night. The other half was, you know, kind of party poopers. Um, but so we were standing up almost the entire night. I got to go up on stage. Like I said, it's just like, there are so many different things that happened at that event that made it like just so awesome. The stuff was cool, but honestly, the interactions with the people, the interactions just at the event. Like I said, just, I I sat around that thing as being my favorite just because of the of the memories and the and the and the fun that I had surrounding uh, getting that item. Awesome, good answer. Yeah, I like that. What about you, Larry? What's your top pickup? Um, so a couple things came to mind, um, but I'm going to go with something I got this week, um, on the Funko Fanatic board, uh, they do a secret Santa gift exchange every year. So this is my third year participating in secret Santa. Um, so you get right, like hundred people, you randomly get assigned somebody you send gifts to, uh, somebody randomly, diff different person randomly sends you stuff. You give them a list, like, you know, different stuff stuff you're into and, and and all that like hey here's a link to my instagram uh here's stuff i already own like that kind of stuff so uh i got my package this week we got to open it up on thursday and uh gerald from california sent me a jolly bee funko pop um so it's pretty rad i had never like i typed up a nice thank you on the board that basically said i had never been to jolly bee before um, I didn't even know Jolly Bee was a thing. They don't have them in Arizona. Um, but when that Jolly Bee pop came out like early summer, like I'm like, hey, this is pretty cool. Like, what is this thing? Like Jeremy and I looked it up. We're like, hey, Chicken Joy, spaghetti, these fruit pies. We're like, this thing's pretty awesome. Like, where is the closest Jolly Bee? Turns out the closest Jolly Bee to Phoenix is in Las Vegas. Um, so when uh, me and the family took a trip to Vegas over the summer, the first place we went was in the in an uber to uh to jollybee and i had chicken joy and spaghetti and that amazing gravy which i poured on the spaghetti and it was delicious uh all for the first time um so yeah i thought it was pretty cool that uh because of funko i discovered a new favorite restaurant we went again in anaheim because there's one in anaheim when we're out there for designer con um so every time i every time i go somewhere that has a jollybee now i'm totally gonna go uh all thanks to funko and I will think of Gerald because he sent me the awesome Jolly Bee Funko Pop, which is now in its forever home in my collection. Awesome. I love the story behind it, too. 
All right, Scott. I was gonna say, well, fuck me. I don't have a good yeah, enough story like me. Larry's. Like, I can't top okay. that. I should have okay. gone. You should have gone last, fucker. Like, good God. Yeah, that was a hell of a closeout. Right um, there. yeah, that that's like I'm done. Like, I gotta step away here because Larry has an emotional story that makes me want to cry. And then I'm <laughs> I kind of wish like, I would have just started. I'm gonna Scott, be like, did you meet a really cool dude in Anaheim at Designer Con and go home with some really cool cereal? I that's what I was gonna say. Is I, I, it's not a single purchase that yeah. I think is my my most favorite, but uh, this year, thanks to Funko, uh, I have a new, I guess, collection obsession, which is you can see part of it right there. <laughs> I'm really bad at this. Um, <laughs> there you go. For anybody on the, not watching the video, I am trying to point at something behind me using my webcam, and it's <laughs> not working. Uh, it's the uh, it's like I'm just gonna go this way. I don't know. Um, it's a whole inverted thing. I'm idiot. I can't do it. Uh, but yeah, the uh, whole new collection schema of the Funko cereals. Uh, I, I, I let's add a story. I'm gonna make up a goddamn story right off the bat. I'm gonna make it emotional. No. Um, so just as a kid, I, I love cereal. I mean, to this day, I'm the most excited I've ever been when October rolls around and count Chocula shows back up in stores. Like for me, cereal was growing up. That's, that's what we ate for breakfast. Cereal was amazing. And the fact that Funko is bringing back cereal with the old school, like late eighties, early nineties feel to all the boxes is awesome. It's still, it's got the prize inside with the little figure. Um, everything about it is absolutely amazing. I have been obsessed and uh, have really gone on kind of a bender buying cereals uh, ever since. So I think like in the pickup, it's not a single item, but I think for 2018, that's the the biggest thing is the, uh, the new collection, the new fandom. I think that's uh, you touched on an interesting point because I'm a big cereal lover too, but there's something about the Funko cereal. I don't know if they plan it this way. And if they did, it's genius. But the way that they uh, design the boxes makes it feel so nostalgic. And I think that's really what connects people to the cereal of Funko. Because you think about it like, what are we talking about? Cereal from Funko. And then you see the boxes and you're like, holy crap, that's cool. Um, you know, they do a lot of classic characters too. Like, you know, I know Larry's favorite, Mega Man. They've got Pac-Man. They've got all the old cartoons. I, I mean, Lino and Mumra, come on. Yeah, Magic. right. Skeletor got that yeah. cool bear brick one right back there, uh, which you know is special to me. But yeah, so for my favorite thing, you guys know I love my action figures. It's gonna be an action figure. It's hard to slim it down to one because holy crap, I bought a lot of crap in 2018, and uh, you look <laughs> back on it, you're like, Jesus, I went a little crazy. Um, but I love my action figures, and <clears throat> so Mezco Toys. Definitely one of my favorite brands, if not my favorite action figure brand right now. Uh, they gave me uh, the Joker Deluxe Edition, and that figure is just so amazing. Um, there's just something about something about that figure that I cannot stop taking pictures of it. Uh, if you guys know, I, I post like pictures on my Instagram of toys, and every Sunday I do Joker Sunday, and I would say this. MDX Joker's probably been in 90% of all the photos that I've done uh, just because I, I just love the way it looks. I love the accessories. I thought Mezco just did a, such a great job with this figure. It reminds me of kind of like the Jack Nicholson Joker, and I think that's probably why I have such a connection to it, even though it's not the head sculpt and it's not licensed. So don't get me in trouble, Mezco. It feels like the 1989 uh, Joker from that movie. Um, and so I, it's just, I don't know. I just love that figure. It's definitely my favorite of the year by far. I can't pick anything else. But I, I like you guys, uh, you know, sharing those stories. Uh, it's, it's cool to see what you pick and why. Um, so thanks for entertaining my question. Good question, man. And good choices, everybody. We got some cool stuff this year. We bought but, a lot of shit. Yeah. Just wait till next year. <laughs> wait, thanks. <laughs> Wait till next year for sure. <laughs> right? It doesn't stop, man. I have plans. Uh-oh. <laughs>
Uh-oh. That, that, Uh-oh. Start starting an idea of I have plans is never a good. Especially have. when it comes to Jeremy. When he says I have yeah. plans, I'm a little bit worried. Yeah. I th- I said I said I, I think I'm finally I said I think my goal for 2019 is I'm finally gonna do it. Like I'm finally You're gonna have sex. <laughs> uh, absolutely. <laughs> um I'm I'm going to secret room. Oh yeah, oh, you're, gonna do, you're gonna do the secret. You're gonna do the hidden the hidden door. I'm doing the secret room. I'm going secret yes. room. I uh, that is that is that is my goal in 2019 is to so, secret room. Like I don't think it's a big secret, right? You're you're moving. You're looking for a new house. You have a realtor. Have you told your realtor that you're looking for a house with a secret room? Absolutely. I, I said, I, so, right? They want to know, right? Like, how many have bedrooms? Them looking. Have- how many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? Oh yeah, and I want a secret room. So, so I want the house to look like it only has three bedrooms, but I want a secret fourth bedroom. Can you go ahead and find that on the market for me? <laughs> so you would be you'd be surprised what's out there. <laughs> yeah. All there, right, because apparently, like I said, in in some of the houses that we're looking at, it's there's like there's all these different ones where all the rooms are downstairs, and there's like one room upstairs where you could technically wall off. The upstairs, like it doesn't exist. Yeah, that's okay. what I was to say. You're gonna have to find a place that has a good location for a room that you can make it look like it just is like that hallway just ends with a bookshelf, yeah. you know, that, or like yeah. that has been my like said, Scott. Me and Scott have talked about this for years. I want one too. That's for a really years. cool idea. I have the the room that this is in. I could do because it's that same thing. It's at the end of a hallway. I could try to make some like wall it off and make cabinets. Or something like that. I think it would work. Well, yeah, I want a secret room as well. I went to this house one time. I used to do construction loan inspections just randomly. And there was a guy building a a secret room. And he had built it into the bookcase. But, like, it was crazy because the the bookcase had, like, a pocket door. And it was another bookcase. So you could just slide it in. You didn't even know it was there. And it was, like, this whole big room. Um, You know, he had it all set up. It was the coolest idea. See what you what you need to try to do, Jeremy, is have it where it's like a little mini walk-in closet, so everyone thinks it's just a closet, but then have a secret wall in that closet that opens up. So it's different from the bookcase. Yeah, I have I've I've dreamt about this for years. Like I said, I I said Scott Scott's known me for quite a while. Like for for we'll say for a long time. For a long time. Uh, And I said I from day I think from the first couple weeks that I've known you, Scott. I think we've We've talked about secret doors. We've we've talked about the secret room. We I we've actually planned out the best ways to do it. <laughs> like, wow. you, now you get to put that plan into action. Yeah, yeah I really hope it comes to fruition because when that, I come that, to visit that's you, my, that's, that's my 2019 goal. What about yeah. what about your guys' 2019 goals? What do you what do you got? Oh man, I gotta move into my damn house too. I just <laughs> <laughs> Larry, with, with all those de- with all those delays. Larry just he just wants his damn house. I just want my new house to be built. And same thing. Like I'm not gonna have a secret room. But I've been in my head trying to plan how I'm going to set up my new office. So I just want to get that done. Jer- Jeremy, uh, Brian just uh, dropped a little hint in the thing. Apparently, after uh, the what? hurricane just destroyed the town of Joplin, uh, all the, the rebuilt tornado. houses all have secret tornado shelter rooms. That's awesome. after the tornado destroyed. Yeah, I mean, yeah. sad, but then awesome. So yeah, it sounds like you need to move to Joplin. Yeah, and you'll have a bunch of secret rooms. That's so true. Design my own secret room. Yeah, yeah, I think you can pull it off. I'm I'm gonna pull it off. I can't wait to see how it turns out. Yeah. Larry, I just feel bad for you because your your house. It, it's only been like a year. Oh, yeah, it's only been a year. But that's oh. all right. Oh, well, at least you're not paying like on it, like yeah. while it's being built. Like there's yeah. no mortgage yet. But yeah, that's that's completely awful. Yep, sucks. Right. Never again will I build a new house. Larry's redesign. So Larry's anxious moving into his house and moving into his office. For 2019 organized. Nate, what about you? What do you got for 2019? Oh, geez. What do you want to accomplish? 2019. Um, it's gonna sound lame because I'm doing the house thing too, but I want to get some stuff done around my house. I've got a uh, kind of like it's an old garage that turned into a guest house in my backyard. My dream is to turn that into like a full fledged living space with a kitchen and a bathroom so that I could eventually rent that out like an Airbnb or something. Um, so that's going to be my goal. I don't know if I'm going to get it done next year. Cause it's going to be a lot of money. 
So but. you heard it here, folks. Uh, you can soon rent out Nate's <laughs> yeah. garage in his uh, <laughs> backyard. I'm going to put up an Airbnb ad and it'll say yeah. member of the STS guys. Yeah. And if you, if you book a Saturday, if you book a Saturday night, you get to be Automatic a guest, guest on the podcast. Yeah. Yes. Well, I, I, let's, hey, you know what? We don't need Nate. You don't need Patreon. Why don't we just make that another tier of our of our Patreon? You get a stay. You get a stay in <laughs> Nate's backyard. <laughs> stay a night at Nate's house. Yeah. Yeah. You provide stay a night the in Nate's backyard. Yeah. Provide your own airfare, but you get to live at Nate's house. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to talk about the specifics about that, but you know, thousand dollars a month. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be great. Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Or uh, yeah. Yeah. Worth it. Jeremy, that so, can be your secret room in Nate's backyard, says Brian. Yeah, Brian says. So, yeah, Jeremy, you can just – it's so secret you have to get on a plane. It's so secret <laughs> I have to fly two hours. <laughs> I feel like since we're all talking house stuff, we're being way too adultish. What we do you got, Scott? I know uh, you could go the same route, but what do so, you got? So, yeah, so so my legit one is, yeah, I, as many people know, my house is way too small. I got to buy a new one. That That's goal number one. Yep. Um, goal number two is to find a fucking place to put all this goddamn cereal that I've been buying. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's the legit thing is I have these bags that are just sitting there because I'm like, I don't know where to put them. It's there's each of those bags has 10 boxes of cereal. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> there's legit um, 20 some s- boxes of cereal right there that I like, how am I going to put them anywhere? Uh, Mike from Talking Pops has, I believe, a complete collection of cereal. He, I think he has all the ones they've ever released. He has a pretty cool bookshelf where they're kind of uh, on the side. Like, I'll, yeah. I'll have to show you. Um, yeah, it's, really cool. it's basically just a bookshelf. But the way he set it up, he's got some of the like the USB lights on there and stuff, too. It's it's pretty cool. But and like, if you do move that can be part of your move too, right? I know you've got other stuff too that's probably not properly displayed because, you know, you became an adult. Tiny, you had I kids in this ass. house. Yeah, yeah your, your house is kind of small. Like, there, hopefully that reason, can be part of your 2019. There's a reason why the, the I made sure that it cuts off right about here because after that is all like, there's like a, a little play kitchen over here. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I also, my office with all my collectibles doubles as the storage room for all my daughter's toys. So... Um, here, Scott. Yeah, I want, you, I want to show you what he's got. I gotta pull up, Larry. Cool. There you go. Look at that. That's that's pretty, oh, that's that pretty is sweet. Pretty. That is actually pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. a little hard to see, but it's, it's it, it and that looks that, that to me that that looks kind of like a Billy bookcase from IKEA. Yeah, you could we could message him, but it probably is. I know he. They, they, Mike and Josh do a lot of IKEA shopping. I believe they had an IKEA date a few uh, months ago, so it probably came from IKEA. I love the LED lights. Uh, yeah, it's pretty rad. Talk again, Jeremy. Hey, so no. I, I have it. I have it locked on me. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I love the LEDs that light up the boxes. That that, that does good. make it kind of cool. He's got like a making fun poster. Is that what that is, or is that the Japanese? No, one? that's yeah. The the one on the right is the Japanese one, and then the one on the left is the spoons. Okay. Um, right. We didn't get those, but apparently he bought them from somewhere. I yeah. I need to find that poster. There's Actually, one I on. Just, I just want one the... reasonably priced one on eBay. The one on the left, right there, like twelve bucks. But didn't yeah, you no. sign one for you, Larry? It was like a yeah. Poster. I have the Japanese one on the right, signed by okay. Mike Becker. Okay. Yeah. See, I I didn't get in that line. I needed to. I should yeah. have done that. Yeah. It same was, same here. Yeah. Well, it was cut off when I was in it, so right. I oh. might have snuck in. That's when Jack Black cut me in line. That, yeah, it was because I was sh- I was trying to get in line and they were like no to me. So collectively, we should have paid more attention because we, I mean, I barely stuck in, but Jeremy Jeremy missed out on it too. We we uh we didn't we weren't good Funko fans that day, but that's all right. We were doing other stuff, which was what we were supposed to do. We were checking out the rest of the convention yeah. floor. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, there's your inspiration. There's Mike it. from Talking Pops is a pretty sweet serial display, man. That looks really good. Bam. It can be done. Bam. We, we have Bam. the technology. Another half geek production. Bam. <laughs> I'm gonna break your eardrums. Bam. <laughs> you know what? You know, you said you know what has also been I said for the good this year? 
is we finally have a video game that we can all play together in yeah. Super Smash Brothers. I have been so addicted to that game, it's ridiculous. I haven't got to play as much as I thought I would or as I would like, but the time I have spent on it has been fun. It was cool playing with you guys, too. That, that's probably the best part is, like Jeremy said, we can all hop on. Uh, we've got all, our own little like kind of Discord set up now. It's pretty yeah, great. Yeah. I'll just so, throw yes. it in there, and at least one person will always join. Yeah, so uh, Nate, myself, and uh, earlier commenter Werebud have been uh, playing the crap out of some Smash Brothers recently. Mm-hmm. It's cool. I'm yeah, you guys still... are getting. You guys are pretty good. Like uh, Funko did. It, you know, Funko does their live streams. They play different games. Like every, I think it's Wednesdays now. Uh, they played Smash uh, this past week, and like Sully, Hillary, Dima, Ashley. I had all never played before, and they were so, I mean, no offense, they were so bad. Oh, <laughs> they, they calling them out. Yeah, they, they, they did not do very good. So it's, I know you guys hadn't played a whole lot either, but you, you guys are all really good, <laughs> even, even Jeremy. Yeah, it's one of those games that, like, you don't realize how difficult it's going to be until you really start playing it. You're like, well, there's, there's so much you have to account for when you're fighting. You have to make sure you don't fall off, and then there's yeah. items in the map. Yeah. Some of the maps it's, move. it's a really hard game to play live in front of a couple hundred people, too, for the first time. So True. Not well, very easy. It's got this thing where you're, like, all well and good when you're playing, because you could play like bots and stuff that are like level like two and you're like oh i'm yeah. beating oh, yeah. this and then the second that you go and play somebody online you're like i suck at this like there are some really good people have yeah. you guys played online against other people not us yeah yeah I've, I've done it a couple of times I, actually, I haven't done that but i might just try it tonight to see how i do it because i get i'm usually in third between Werebud and scott and myself i'm yeah. usually in third place so I'm I'm if I'm if Scott's getting wrecked, I'm definitely gonna get wrecked. So I think it's a, I think it's a good test. Like yeah. right. A couple we, times online I've won, a couple times I've lost. Like it's been a good like crapshoot. Yeah. So what you're saying is smash after the podcast. <laughs> Probably. That's yes. what we did last week. I'm done. Um, so I think we're here to uh, let's go play Super Smash Bros. Go play yeah. Smash Bros. You know well, what? Yeah. Let's be adults and go play video games. Merry Which Christmas would... to everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy yeah. holidays. Thanks go buy Super Fast Yeah. Yippee Yippee Kai Kai around this whole year. Congrats to Brian. You got two awesome movies coming your way. Well, one awesome movie. Ah, uh, one okay movie. Larry, sure. send us a out. movie. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> if you're Show not it. following, if you're, you're not following us on Instagram, you can find us at SDS Guys. We are on Twitter. At SDS Guys, and we're still on the Facebook at the SDS Guys. Uh, sub to our YouTube channel. Uh, we're on Spotify, we're on iTunes, we're on Google Play, audio, all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, sub us up everywhere. This is Larry from the SDS Guys. Chilling like a villain. Chilling like a villain. Sorry. Word. Yeah. Uh, Trying to get Nate my card. came in late. Oh, oh there it is. The, the old guys. one. All right. So for episode 64 of the sts guys i've been jeremy ho ho it's larry hey guys it's been nate <laughs> Yippee ho. it's scott <laughs> <laughs> we're the sts guys have a great night everyone bye, bye.